whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and frozen lake the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. I'm Joe Brooks, and this is Jay Brooks PR. So I started this segment with a poem by Robert Frost, Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening. And I picked that poem to illustrate a point. If I had recorded this on December 31st, 2018, I would have been in violation of copyright. But on January 1st, 2019, that poem had entered into the public domain and therefore is able to be used as a derivative. So we're going to talk today about copyright and specifically about public domain. I just want to preface this by saying I am not an attorney, I do not play one on TV, and I did not even stay at that hotel that claims to make you smarter by having a good night's sleep. But let's just jump right into this. What is the public domain? Well, the public domain is all of the creative works to which there is no exclusive intellectual property claims applied to them. There, a copyright either has expired or has been forfeited or expressly waived by the artist. So it is the property of the public. It, it belongs to all of us. January 1st, 2019 was the first public domain day in the United States in over 20 years, which was really a big deal because over 50,000 artistic titles entered into the public domain. You may ask yourself, why is this important? What is the value of public domain? And why do I care if these items have entered into public ownership? Public domain promotes education. So there are clauses within copyright for fair use, and they specifically apply to educators. But a lot of educators avoid copyright material because should they get challenged, it then becomes their responsibility to prove that they had used this item within the fair use clause. Additionally, public domain items become available for students to gain access to for free. They can find them in a lot of wonderful places. The Library of Congress holds on to many, many public domain items that students can just go on and get for free now. Public domain allows follow-on innovation. This really goes into the idea that art is derivative off of other art, knowledge is derivative off of other knowledge. So follow-on innovation means that you can take something that has been created in the past and you can build from there. Public domain allows low-cost access to information. Now, that does not mean free access to information. This is where you get a lot of the classic books. If you've ever walked into a bookstore, they still have bookstores? They still have bookstores. If you ever walk into a bookstore and you look in the classics section, you can usually pick up several classics for a pretty inexpensive price. Well, the publishers don't have to go through licensing to do that. They can actually just take and publish the now public domain material. Public domain can help promote public health and safety. So within public domain is a special caveat for items that are done within government work. So in my full-time position, I am a photographer and videographer for the government. This is my side game. Anything that I do within my full-time job is public domain. I can't own that because it was produced for the United States government through the taxpayer dollar, so the taxpayer owns it. So everything that I do in my full-time work with my full-time gear becomes public domain. Why did it take nearly 20 years for anything to enter into public domain again? 
Well, in 1998, a certain steamboat driving rodent was about to exit copyright, and that presented a problem for Mouse Corp. So they decided to get together with a bunch of other companies and to lobby Congress to extend the copyright laws that were currently in effect. This law increased the term of copyright for an individual artist to their life plus 70 years for any standard creator. It also increased the copyright for what we call work for hire or corporate creators to 95 years. So this effectively makes copyright in existence for over a century once an item is created. They were so successful in this that not only did Congress extend copyright for any items going forward, but they also made the law retroactive, which put a 20-year break on all items that could possibly enter into the public domain. Some of them even had their copyrights already expire and were made into re-copyrighted items, which, as you may imagine, created a lot of problems, particularly with things that were referred to as orphan works, where people couldn't even figure out who owned the copyright anymore. So this created big problems. Prior to 1998, copyright was an opt-in system. A creator had to put the copyright symbol, I'm sure you've seen it, it's the little C inside a circle. You've seen it, I'm sure. They had to put this symbol in their work with the year of the copyright. And that denoted something as having been copyrighted. Well, the law changed this, and now copyright is an opt-out system. Not only is it an opt-out system, but it's an opt-out system with no clearly defined way to opt out. If a creator doesn't want their item to be within copyright or they want it to go into public domain, it is actually incredibly difficult for them to do this. So this opt-out system that ended up getting created is one of the major reasons why Creative Commons was developed. Artists that want to share their works and want their items to go into a public domain have developed and adopted Creative Commons in order to get around this. And we'll talk about Creative Commons sometime in another vlog. You may be asking after all of this, is copyright a bad thing? And I'm gonna say, of course, copyright is not a bad thing. Copyright is actually very important for creators. Creators too need to be able to get paid for their work in order to be encouraged to create. Copyright encourages creators to create and publishers to distribute the creations. There's a financial incentive there for them to go on doing what they do. However, is it really fair for someone to hold a copyright for a century or longer, and I just, I don't think so. Included in the release of this Public Domain Day were many, many very interesting movies. Um, you have Scaramouche from Rex Ingram. You have The Pilgrim and A Woman of Paris by Charlie Chaplin. You have Our Hospitality by Buster Keaton. You have Safety Last by Harold Lloyd. Uh, within music, there are over 400 musical tracks that were released in Public Domain Day. Irving Berlin, Tommy Dorsey, Jimmy Durante, George Gershwin, Oscar Hammerstein, and many, many more. Within books, you've got Peter Rabbit by Linda Stevens Almond. You have Don Quixote, Miguel Cervantes, which was previously within public domain, but more importantly, you get the William Dean Howells translation that was not within public domain. That was actually copyrighted because it was a derivative work that was copyrighted. Love and Other Stories by Anton Chekhov. You have Murder on the Links by Agatha Christie. You have New Hampshire by Robert Frost, from which I took the poem at the beginning of this clip. You also have theater, choreography, and just so, so much more. I'm gonna make this work a little bit easier for you by including a few links in the comments just down below uh, for you to follow. And when you go through it, you're going to be amazed by just how much there is out there for you to build upon. So go and look at the public domain items and keep creating. And I'm going to take that opportunity to talk again, as I have once before already, about my friend Jordan Worma and Table to Stage.
okay? So Jordan Worma is going throughout Connecticut and parts of Massachusetts and I believe Rhode Island as well. And he is interviewing creators. And it's just a fan... Did I really just do that? I really just did that. You heard me click that, right? I should not have clicked that. Why do I fidget with things when I get things? So <laughs> I got this awesome carabiner mug from Table to Stage. I am a huge fan of Table to Stage with Jordan Worma. It is all about creators. And if you are a creator, you should go check it out. If you like any of what I'm doing here or you want to comment on any of this, please, please put your comments in the comment section below. Also, if it's a thing you like to do, you can subscribe to the channel. I will be putting out additional content. I'm working on trying to get into a regular schedule here, and I'm going to continue with lots of information that just took me a while to learn, so I want to share it and put it out there for you as well. Um, if it helps one person get a little bit of a head start on something that I had to spend hours researching, then you know what? That's worth it to me.